Daybreak, the second map, Luzira against the STC once again. Incredible miracle against OGS at the top right of the map. We have in the red color the Zerg player from Team Incredible Miracle. It is Luzira. He just lost the game, the first map he lost on Belcha Beach to the STC because he didn't scout the early proxy barracks of his opponent and well what can I say, the STC was able to take down the main base, at least the main hatch of Luzira. The Zerg player reacted just in time to save most of his drones, he didn't lose all too many of them and it was kind of a risky move by the STC but in the end Luzira lost too much mining, he lost his base and uh, the STC just playing a little bit greedy behind it as well, he went for three command centers in total and was able to capitalize on it. Starting at the bottom left of the map is the Terran player that we just talked about. We have him in the blue colors. His team is OGS. It is the STC. Daybreak is a map where a lot of players start with uh, greedy builds and well we have an overlord already scouting a a little bit for Luzira. Let's see what the STC is going to do. Right now he has 14 supply and he is waiting quite a bit before building his uh, barracks or the command center. He has 14 supply right now so going for 14 command center already moving down with one of his SCDs. We will see a CC being built here in just a few seconds while Luzira is on 15 supply starting with a hatch first. Still waiting for the command center to be built. There it is. Both of these players therefore starting with early second bases. Razira playing a little bit greedy, he's uh, squeezing in two additional harvesters as is the STC by the way. And uh, we have Luzira on 17 supply already. And is he building another one? Is he building an 18th drone before building the... Yes he is, he's going to 18 supply taking gas. Jesus, Luzira is so greedy right now. He just scouted his opponent's strategy, but he is building his he's building his pool so late. This is incredible. Just building so many drones before he starts with his pool. You can get away with it on a map like Daybreak. We've talked a lot about this. There's one path between the two bases, but it's blocked by rocks, and before they are killed, the distances, the walking distances between the bases, that is, are quite huge. Now the scouting drone for Luzira going into the main base having a quick look at what's happening if there's gas already been taken he knows that there's one refinery his spawning pool is about to finish in regards to the harvest account they are both on 18 right now and the second base for Luzira just finished he immediately started to build additional harvesters he's already getting gas on his own trying to get enough to start with his uh, speed for the zerglings right away this is a pretty interesting opening into the game. Zira is taking a well, it's not really, um, not really um, all the, mo uh, the modest player right now. He's just playing really, really greedy. But so is his opponent. Extractor now being uh, built in the main base of the opponent, just trying to steal one, just trying to save the drone a little bit. He's not going to let the extractor finish. No. Nope cancelling and trying to run away save the drone that's not gonna happen just having a quick look at what's happening over here and he's still harvesting gas the SCV is being attacked already by two zerglings trying to deny the scout and once again for the turnaround player yeah nice doing a good job but yep it dies yeah, at the same time we have the reactor uh, sorry we have the reactor being built we have two additional barracks he's going for reactor factory Hellions once again adding more and more barracks as we speak. Speed is halfway done uh, for Luzira. He's getting four queens in total. He already has two, he's building two at a time now. And at the same time we have him on uh, 27 harvesters already. 27 against 24, he's getting more and more of them. He's just relying on his queens now, on his creep spread, on the spine crawls in the back in order to defend against his opponent's units. And there are only Hellions being built so far, so that is not a huge problem. But at the same time we already have the tech lab being built. So let's see what the SCC is going to do. He's getting a uh, double gas already not added the third and the fourth just yet but that double barracks is ready so we have three barracks in total and he is going for double reactor while researching stim just now the zero is once again building the macro hash before he starts with this tech which is not the worst thing that can happen he needs a lot of lava especially if he wants to stick to the zergling strategy that he's been using for quite a while now more and more drones are being built he doesn't have any 
attack units whatsoever. He only has queens, 34 harvesters, getting 8 additional ones, so getting an evolution chamber, spreading his creep. He has 2 creep uh, slaves right now, so he can hit, spread his creep like crazy, which is exactly what he does right now. 3 active creep tumors everywhere, he's doing a really good job, but at the same time we have him with Roach Run taking double the gas right now, so we'll probably see him in tech to layer very soon as well. And at the same time the SSC just decided to not just start the, the starport, but for now invest his minerals into the command center, start the starport a little bit later. He already has a bunch of Hellions and we have a very nice walling at the front. Walling in a little bit, trying to make sure that none of the Zerglings are able to uh, run into the main base. And as you can see the Hellions have a lot of respect for Creep. They don't want to fight on Creep and therefore they're just trying to um, yeah, well, roam the outskirts of the creep spread in order to have a quick shot at uh, new creep tumors but well New Zira is playing really well so far is able to spread his creep even further across the map cancels the creep tumors as well I really like the move it's something that a lot of Zergs has be, have been doing lately but not well how to put it well it's something that should be done a lot more than it actually is more and more Zerg players try to do it try to cancel the creep tumors that are in danger but at the same time I have to say that a lot of them are not doing it on a constant level but only occasionally so Luzira is really on top of his creep spread and on his creep tumor management one could say three spine crawlers are actually a very very nice defense we have the queens that we've already mentioned a lot of hellions though and he's still producing hellions he is still producing hellions in total we have 10 of them 56 harvesters to 46 by now the third base has been a uh, completed with the command center tech now and hive no hive yeah well <laughs> as if um the lair tech no lair tech is on its way lair tech is on its way plus one armor we have banelings and now the roach born doesn't start uh, well he might start the roach of speed upgrade as soon as lair finishes he's getting a third base now and the creep well, the queen once again spreading creep even further but well, let's see, let's have a quick look into the main base of uh, the SCC. He's already pulling ahead in supply, he's at 100 supply, he's getting a ton of upgrades now. And he's getting dual upgrades at that, adding the armory so he can start with plus 2 plus 2. So he's really on top of his game, the STC is doing a very very good job. It's not going to be as easy as on Belcher Beach. Probably wasn't all that easy on Belcher Beach, but he had a huge advantage after the early game. He risked a lot, so it was only... Um, Else, but wow, the Hellions being surrounded by the Zerglings. The Zerglings killing a lot of them, but wow, this is quite the trade. Most of the Zerglings are already dead, but look at the resources lost. Both of them lost roughly the same amount of resources, but the STC just lost his ability to control the map. He lost the ability to uh, make sure that his opponent is not spreading his creep further, and also those Zerglings do quite a number on him. The Hellions are gone now, and we have STC relying on the Marines and a couple of Marauders now. We have Combat Shield being researched, so he is going to get those plus 10 hit, hit points. And on this map we've seen a lot of different strategies. You can play Ultralisks on uh, Belgia Beach. Uh, obviously, Brute Lords are also a very valid option. And we have now already the Spire being built for Luzira. He's really fond of, of Mutalisks. And uh, Mutalisks are such a great unit in order to uh, gain map control. You can try... There's the Banding Speed kicking in, by the way. You can try to control the map by pinning your opponent into his three or two bases by constantly attacking. Now we have a small attack by the STC, uh, by Luzira and the STC trying to defend against it. And the bunker is not gone. Very nice job, by the way, picking off that one Baneling. So really well done by the STC so far. He is playing pretty stable. At the same time, Luzira is taking control of the map, though. And that's something that a Terran player doesn't like all that much, usually. 72 harvester supply against 61. The SCC is doing pretty well. He's going for plus one, plus one, uh, plus two, plus two attack upgrades already. I would love to see him uh, build at least one Thor in order to cope with his opponent's uh, Mutalist that we will see in a uh, short time. And wow, Banelings being exploded at the ramp, and uh, the SCC just walking right into them. 111 against 111 supply plus two plus two did not just kick in yet. And I talked to Moro a little bit about it. Moro is playing both races, Zerg and Terran. I asked Moro, why on earth would 
we have once again the double spire yes we do nozira is getting the double spire once again interesting so he wants to rely a lot on his mutalisk strategy in a combination with the zerglings by the way a plus two upgrade is now researched for the zerglings as well yeah, but the one thing that I've been asking uh, Moro about is why exactly Tyrant players nowadays don't use Ravens more often when they realize that their opponents are trying to use Borrowed Bailing, something that Luzira is trying to do in this game. And Moro raised a valid point. It's not only that you have to switch the starport, that you lose a lot of starport time in order to build the Raven. It's not only the costs, but it's the combination of both. And also, Terran players have to rethink their positioning in the game if they would try to use uh, Ravens in order to scout ahead, in order to make sure that they see burrowed bailings and kill the creep tumors because a scan just has such a huge range that using scans is something that gives you so much vision that you always know where your opponent is positioning his army therefore you can react accordingly but if you would start to use a raven and save your scans you obviously would have more money but at the same time you would run the risk of being flanked by the zerg player a lot more often and it was quite interesting to talk with uh, Moro about it so uh, we'll probably elaborate on it a little bit further in the future but for now we just focus a bit on the game as now the SCC is trying to get aggressive. He's getting flanked from two sides, getting sandwiched now. He might not be able to take down the space. The Baneling stream in just a little bit too late. They try to take position, try to take out the Marines, but very nice spread by the STC. I have to give it to the Terran player that he is doing an awesome job at just dodging those Banelings. And Lazira, he is attacking with the Zerglings head on, but the Banelings are way too late in the fight. So that's a little bit of a blunder by Lazira in the Lazira's unit control. He's trying to go for a run by strategy once again. We don't have Mutalisks just yet. He's getting plus one upgrades now for the Mutalisk armor and we have Zerglings everywhere. 2200 uh, gas and minerals for Lazira. He has a lot He's waiting, he's not getting the needles to set. Finally, he's starting. He already is on plus one attack upgrade for them and is now getting plus two attack. I have to say that Luzira, he, he probably lacks the lava. That's the only explanation that I, I can up with. Yes, finally, he's building tons of needles. He can build even more right now. He's getting Banelings at the same time. Three bases now for both of these players. Supply is 168 to 187. The ha army supply 120 against 81 worker supply 85 to 68 in favor of Luzira he's trying to get a fourth base and we have now the ghost academy for the STC run by attempt with a bunch of zerglings trying to flank his opponent 15 mutalists are already on the field he's building seven additional ones plus three plus three being researched here comes Luzira with the baileys retreating once again getting baited into the tank fire the Zerglings with a run by a ten, but tanks and marines put an end to this attack. And we have once again the Bailings. Oh Jesus, just get crushing into the Marauders. This is something they don't want to happen. Plus two, plus two is done for the Marines. They are so strong right now. The Mutalists are on one, one upgrades. But wow, Lucira is losing way too many units right now. Well, we have the plus three plus three upgrade lined up for the STC. He's trying to snipe his opponent's hatch. He's now backing off once more since the drones are being pulled and the mutalisks are being reinforced, picking off additional, additional medivacs. Wow, this is just such a well-played game by the STC. The, oh, we have Luzira with a very impressive game as well. I like his strategy with the double upgrades, but will it be enough? to take on the STC. He's picking off tank after tank. I would really love the STC to add a Thor right now. He needs Thors in order to deal with the huge numbers of Mutalists that Lazira is throwing against him. 17 already getting three additional ones. The upgrades as well. And yeah, once again, the Marines babysitting the tanks. But the thing is, he doesn't have that many. He has 50 against, against uh, Banelings, Zerglings and Mutalisks. Not all of them are able to make sure that the tanks survive, but finally he's sieging up into a position where he can tank down the third base. And wow, the STC with such an impressive performance of skill now. We have more and more units just being uh, taken out 
before they can even engage in a fight. The Mutilus that just pop out of one of the Lava Axes, one of them. Another base being built now by the STC. Yeah, there's no way that he's going to secure the base in time. The Mutilisks are just, there are just too many of them, but now there are a bunch of Marines on 3-3 upgrades, and that's something that you should not make fun of. Three, three upgrade marines are so strong, but the Mutalists have already a plus two attack upgrade. At the bottom right, there's a base full of zero that he can't use just now, and he is trying to get onto the high ground. Bailings being more of the sea. That's so many siege tanks. 14 of them, 61 marines now, and most of them are with the army, able, able to defend. Too many Zerglings die, too many Banings being targeted, nice target firing by the STC, 186 supply for our Tyrant player, Luzira is at 110, losing units by the second, and no, the Muralists are not enough to decide this game in favor of Luzira, that's the GG, and Luzira loses the best of three to the STC with a 0-2-2. Alright guys, so another very quick best of three, the STC, I have to admit I'm really impressed by his performance today, he did very very well against Luzira, Luzira losing this match after only two games. Our next game of the day is going to be a Protoss vs Terran for GG, aka OGS Finn is going to face Core Prime. And well, let's see what those two are up to. But the Zerg versus Terran games have been decided after only two games. One has been won by the Zerg player. Clyde was not able to hold the candle to Sniper's performance, and Zira now just losing the DSTC. And let's see what's happening in uh, the next match. I think that the the lobby is probably going to be hosted very soon. Right now, the players have to get ready as well. And yeah, I mentioned it before, there are two streams, ladies and gentlemen. Moltrap and Wolf are commentating uh, the second stream, the stream in the studio, and myself. I'm Calder, by the way. I'm commentating uh, the stream in uh, our GOM office, the solo stream for the rest of the games. So I hope that you have a lot of fun with today's games and obviously there are a lot of great matches being played. We still have two games to go. We have 4GG against Prime and we have Monster against Seed, which is going to be the first Zerg vs Protoss of the day. Also a match that's going to be uh, quite interesting and yeah, I'm really happy. It's going to be good fun to cast those games and I'm especially looking forward to 4GG's performance. I want to see if he is able to uh, Beatcore, if he's able to take down the Protoss player. He had a really good run last season, but will he be able to compete in Code A after he was not cut out to succeed in Code S? We'll find out in just a few moments. So I guess we'll have a quick break while the players are going to prepare for the match. We are going to go to the lobby. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back after just a few minutes. <laughs> 